Hi there. Um, in the last tutorial, we spoke about using an image map to cool points. So, splitting a list into two using values that you get from an image map, color brightness. And we created circles from those points and we used the values that we got from the image map to drive their the radius of a circle. Uh, so you would realize that uh, when you increase the circles, they begin to intersect. Uh, now that's fine if, you know, it's an intention. Um, on the other hand though, if, uh, if you'd like to make circles and have them uh, fit within the bounds of of their edges. Uh, this tutorial would show you a simple way to do that. So, uh, if if you would like to know how the circles were created, please check uh, the tutorial on creating uh, on on cooling points uh, using an image sampler. Okay, so since we have our points that we have cooled already, we can simply use a delineate mesh uh, widget. So what that does is it creates a triangulation using points. So it takes your points and creates a triangulated mesh from them. So if we put that into points, uh, Let's let's bake that and see if we good. So that's that's what it looks like. So you've got all these tiny triangles that have been made from your points. So they're just made by interconnecting those points that you have. So let's delete that and come back to uh, to Grasshopper. So now that we have the Delaunay uh, mesh faces, we want to get the edges of those faces, and we can do that using the uh, face boundary so that's on the analysis face boundary and if you plug that in so that gives you the edges of your mesh face now if we took those edges and uh, and we exploded them let's look at what the edges look like first so they're all polylines I'm going to simplify that Okay, that's not working. Let's flatten it. Okay, just to take away those zeros. Okay, so they're all polylines. And if I exploded the curve, that polyline, it would give me the three separate curves that make up each triangle. Now that's what I want. Uh, so I want to take the ex exploded polyline and get the endpoints. Or even maybe instead of getting the endpoints, uh, let's get the let's get the um, the midpoint. So let's evaluate length. And I'm gonna say I want to evaluate at zero point five, which is half the length of my curve. So have the length of every curve right. And I'm going to take those points. Let's see what they look like. So right. So I have three points in every tree, which makes sense because they are points from every line in every tree. So I've got three lines in every tree. So now I have three points in every tree. And I'm going to list out all of these points. So let's use the list item. I'm going to put the points in list. And right now my list index is zero. But I want to list zero, one, and two from every tree. Uh, so I'm just going to add an output for zero, one, and two. 
and I'm going to use under the curve, I'm going to use a circle three point. So a circle three point needs three points that it would use to fit the circle. So I'm going to put my first point in point A, second in point B, and third in C. And now I have that. Okay, that looks good. Uh, let's. Let's see. Okay, why don't we take the endpoints and see if that makes a difference? Okay, uh, so instead of using a circle three point, I'm going to use an in circle so that it inscribes a circle inside the triangle. So let's delete the circle three points. I'm going to use my evaluate again and delete that. And let's try this one more time. Okay, good. That's a much better result. Uh, now, if I pull my evaluate, it would either shrink the circles and make them not touch each other or pull them close to each other so now you can see that some of the circles are touching their edges but none of them overlap on the edge and yeah that's kind of what I was hoping to get so yeah Thank you for watching.